So to kick off our afternoon, we are going to start with a session on orchestrating workforce ecosystems. And that is with our presenting partner, Deloitte Consulting, in collaboration with MIT Sloan Management Review. So joining us, we will have Elizabeth Altman. She is MIT Sloan Management Review's guest editor, and she's an assistant professor of management at the University of Massachusetts in Lowell. Stephen Hatfield, who is the principal at workforce transform, uh, principal workforce transformation at Deloitte Consulting, and it will be hosted by Allison Ryder, and she is at MIT Sloan Management Review, where she is the senior project editor. So, welcome to MTech Next, Steve, Liz, and Allison. everyone. Just very briefly going to introduce your main speakers for this afternoon. So I'm really pleased to be here representing the MIT Sloan Management Review Deloitte Collaborative Research on the Future of the Workforce. You are joined by two experts in that space, uh, Professor Elizabeth Altman of UMass Lowell. She's also the guest editor at MIT Sloan Management Review and has been leading our Future of Workforce research for the last two years. Stephen Hatfield, Principal of Workforce Transformation, as Elizabeth noted, um, at Deloitte Consulting, will also be speaking to our results. And we don't have a ton of time, so let's get into it now. Excellent. Thanks very much, Allison. It is a pleasure to be here. So thank you very much for being here, and thank you to the organizers. I was saying outside, as an academic, it is not often the case that you walk into a room and see your research kind of in a large booth being presented. So that was a, that was a fun twist. Um, so again, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, in now March of 2020, um, I received an email out of the blue from David Kieran from MIT Sloan Management Review. And he started with, this isn't spam or something to that effect. This, <laughs> this is a real email. I know who you are. And then invoked my advisor. And I know your advisor. And I want to talk to you about uh, if you'd consider being guest editor for Future of the Workforce um, for uh, Sloan Management Review. And so I did. And it was very interesting. You know, I first said to him, but I study platforms and ecosystems. I don't really study future of the work. And he said, we know, but we think future of the work has to do with platforms and ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And we think, therefore, it would be great if you could join us and we could work together to explore this. And it, in fact, has been. And so then what happened is we agreed that we would interview a bunch of people. And when I say a bunch of people, I mean people like the head of HR for Walmart and the former CEO of consumer um, of the consumer business for Amazon and a general, a couple of generals in the US Army. So people who have big uh, responsibilities in organizations. And we said, well, we'll talk about them about the future of the workforce. And it quickly became clear, and if you've read any of our articles or reports, you'll see we start with this, that when I said workforce, we were kind of talking past each other. And so I finally realized that I should start the conversation by saying, when I say, or when we say workforce, what do we mean? And by and large, even at the most senior levels, when I asked this question, the answer back was, oh, that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I was in a meeting this morning where we were discussing that, or yesterday some, this came up. And what we realized was that this is an interesting topic in itself, and we should kind of think about what we mean by workforce, and then we can think about what is the future of that workforce. So of course we mean employees, um, and I say of course, but it's not always of course, because this isn't just about gig workers or contractors or temps. This is very much about employees in an organization. But it's also about contractors, freelancers, gig workers. So this slide uh, is a screenshot from TopTal, which is a talent platform. And what's very interesting about it is you'll notice that the person here, Danielle Thompson, is a product designer. So very highly skilled, very well-educated person. And you probably can't see, but uh, the person in the middle here is an M&A expert. We have a C++ uh, developer, Python developer, et cetera. And so the point is that um, these types of people are now very much part of the workforce. Subcontractors, when Amazon started its own logistics division, it didn't just hire a bunch of drivers. 
If you have had an Amazon package delivered to your home, probably it came potentially from a mom and pop uh, company who is now uh, driving for Amazon, right? So they have this large subcontractor fleet. We don't have enough time here, but we can talk about the pros and cons, responsibilities. Uh, by the way, we've talked a bunch about ethics, morals, responsibilities, um, differences in geographies, labor laws, et cetera. But as you think about this workforce, you need to think, or we have started to think much more broadly. And we also include complementary businesses. So I'd ask the question, how many of you have phones? I presume you all are carrying a smartphone. Uh, and if it's an Apple phone, for example, how many of you have phones that only have apps on them that are, if it's an Apple phone, they're all from Apple, and if it's an Android phone, they're all from Android or the company from the phone. So raise hands. Does anybody have a phone that has no apps from anybody other than the company? Mm -hmm. So nobody, right? So that means you are all benefiting from complementers, and the companies that sold you the phone are also benefiting from complementers. So all of those companies have complementer companies, complementary companies, in this case, app developers, that are not suppliers to them, but they are also uh, in, in the mix. Same thing with marketplace sellers, Amazon. I would venture to say that many of you have purchased items from Amazon or eBay or Facebook Marketplace that are not sold by the company. So and when you put those all together, they are all part of the workforce. And further, we talk about technologies. So my favorite story, so chatbots, robots, other technologies. My favorite story about this is an interview we were, I was conducting with, uh, we were conducting with a senior person at NASA. And he said, we actually have needed to give our software bots employee ID numbers. And when he said it, I said, wait, what? And he said, well, see, they need access to data and the way to do their job and the way our systems are set up, the only people or entities who can get access to that data are entities with employee IDs. So like, you know, we don't give them t-shirts or invite them to parties, but our chat bots have employee IDs. At which point I said, I guess they are part of the workforce. Now again, we can have whole conversations about whether a robot is part of a workforce, et cetera, but I think thinking much more broadly about who is in the workforce makes sense. And so with that, we ended up defining, uh, coming up with this definition of a workforce ecosystem, whereby we say it's a structure, and for those who might study these topics, we can get into a debate on whether it's a structure or not, but we call it a structure, focused on value creation, so it's about creating strategy, it's really about getting to outcomes, for an organization that consists of complementarities and interdependencies, I'll come back to that, and the structure encompasses actors from within the organization, those would be the employees, and beyond, everyone else I've been talking about, working to pursue both individual and collective goals. And that's very important because the individual, if you're only thinking about the collective goals, if you're only thinking about the goals of your organization, and you're not thinking about the goals of each of the elements of your workforce, then you end up with misalignment. And I'll just finally add this fine print that maybe is big enough that you can see. This notion of complementarities and interdependencies, if you're interested in this topic, I'd encourage you to learn a little more about this, and I'm happy to talk about it afterwards. Complementarities is exactly what I was discussing with app developers, independent organizations working together towards shared goals. And interdependencies basically means we succeed or fail together. So um, we are interdependent. And again, if you're in an ecosystem, you get those interdependencies. And that's important because that's what defines an ecosystem versus a portfolio or a group or alliances. That's why we chose the term ecosystem, not just because it was kind of a group. OK, so um, running short on time, so I will just say 2021, we issued a research report introducing this notion of workforce ecosystems. Uh, the f on the SMR website, you can get access to all these. If you're a geek or want to pretend you're a geek, we have a good interactive in the middle where you can play with our data and it's very cool to do different cuts. And then in January of last year, we had introduced 
a research brief, essentially, that's a short article that gives the top kind of five ideas about this. It's now a year old, but it's still, if you want the short version, that's a good way to get it. We'll have some other articles coming out soon. We just, hot off the press, two weeks ago, How's it Three. May 17th, launched the 2022 research report. And you'll see the first research report was really introducing this notion. And in 2022, we've introduced a report on orchestrating workforce ecosystems. So it's taking it to the next level, thinking more about how we manage in these, um, in these types of systems. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Steve to talk about our research methodology and some of our findings. Thank you, Liz, thank you, everyone. So you can see from the 2022 research report, we had 4,000 respondents, 129 countries, 29 unique industries, and we interviewed over 19 thought leaders and industry experts. And what's been very exciting about this research for, from my standpoint is I lead our efforts at Deloitte around the future of work globally. And, we, and I've been in the role since 2017. So both pre-pandemic trends and the acceleration post. And that's why we're really excited about this research because it represents that acceleration that's happening across businesses as far as all the different players that are coming to the table to achieve these outcomes. And so you would think, well, what did we find in this research given the way in which the pandemic has put a spotlight on the multiple players that come to the table, largely on these digital platforms? Next slide, please. And so, not surprisingly, 93% of the managers view some form of external workforce as part of their organization's sort of overall workforce, right? 74% agree that effectively managing this extended workforce is critical to their success. But, next slide please. You can see that only 58% agree that an integrated approach is critical managing these external contributors. 30% agree that their organization is sufficiently prepared to manage this extended workforce. So the flip side, right? 70% are not prepared to manage this extended workforce, even though that is the way that more and more organizations, 93%, view how they're going after achieving their business outcomes and who comprises their workforce writ large. So for that, we stepped back and we thought, well, how do we think about this level of orchestration? How do we think about who actually is intentionally do doing this versus not? And you can see a variety of different players that need to come to the table in some coordinated fashion. And you can see the different enablers around technology, integration, leadership approaches, culture, and so forth. Liz, anything you'd wanna to add to this hexagon? Sure, since we have a few minutes, uh, and this is one of my favorite parts of the report, I'm, I'm happy to walk through it if that's okay. Um, <laughs> And can I, can I give a little plug for the book? This is a good place for the book. Sure. Okay. So in, uh, it, we just finished a book for MIT Press, and it will be coming out. In, it's going through the very long book copy process, copy edit process, and it will be out in the spring. And I mention it now because as we develop this framework, we realized that this framework was rich enough to really kind of blow it out more. So if you read the report, you'll see um, us talk about, and I'll walk through briefly these pieces, but in, and then in the book, uh, kind of each, there are a few chapters for each hexagon. So the hexagons represent some of our main themes. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about management practices and Steve, and I don't know if you want to talk a little more about what you've seen with, you know, your colleagues have seen um, changes in management practices related to the orchestra uh, orchestrating workforce ecosystems. We've also seen technology enablers we have a whole discussion about um, different types of technology that gets involved. Integration architectures basically means how organizations interact with all of these other parties that we've talked about. So for example, some organizations are much more um, rigid or strict and rigorous in terms of how they interact with external parties. Some are much more open, and I'm sure we can come up with some examples here. And then leadership approaches, we realize that Leading in a traditional hierarchical command and control type of organization is very different than leading in an ecosystem organization. So we talk about influence without authority, we talk about lack of control, all those types of things. Yeah, it's interesting because initially we started seeing organizations consider 
digital platforms like internal opportunity marketplaces. And that became the technology enabler. And then, of course, we're all now connected in different ways in this digital workplace and the acceleration of, if you will, the work tech market. And so the technology enablers become a very critical underpinning that accelerates this ecosystem. But it also puts a bright spotlight on how managers need to manage. What are those practices? How do we enroll members of that ecosystem to the objectives of a project? How do we organize teams around how they need to manage collectively? How do we create a culture, which tends to be the one thing that you can bind an organization pretty readily for, uh, forward against these different business objectives that we mentioned before? And so suddenly, as the technology got better, the managerial demand became much more critical. And then, of course, what are those leadership approaches? What is it that the organization is putting forward from the top in order to sort of put out what we're trying to achieve as far as this ecosystem. Meaning, what's the strategy, right? What organizations are putting forward, like Amazon Flex, right? Deliberate strategy around that gig workforce, target buying shipped, deliberate strategy around that business model. Deloitte, we have a, a relationship with Xperify. They provide us with ex, um, AI talent when we need it that are at that extra caliber, that higher level. And that's part of how we're going to market to provide AI services to our clients. So what are those different strategies and what is leadership doing in relation to forming that ecosystem? Great, and I will just add one more piece on this slide. It's the beauty of controlling the controller. Mm. Uh, is that I think it's important to note that these, the names around the outside of the hexagon are different functional areas you can see, and they are not randomly placed. So we actually thought about um, three axes. So there's a vertical axis through the hexagons where you have senior leaders and you have business unit leaders. And we have them in the middle because it really it all comes back to the top leadership and business unit leadership. We have human resources and procurement across the top horizontal axis because those organizations get very involved yeah. in attracting, enabling, maintain, retaining organizations. And there's a, a, and if you read the report, you'll see there's a very interesting ten tension sometimes and new ways of working together between procurement, which often is involved with contingent talent, and HR, which is in, mostly involved with internal talent. And as the ecosystem comes together, those organizations need to often work together in different ways. And then finally, the bottom horizontal axis is IT, finance, and legal, because all three of those functional areas, there are implications for all three of those functional areas. IT, we talk about privacy, data access, um, all types of new tools. Um, finance, there's a whole question about how you deal with metrics related to these uh, workforce ecosystems. And legal, there are huge intellectual property considerations. And so for every one of these groups, we can talk about the implications. This is, by the way, not to say that other functional organizations aren't involved. So marketing is also very involved. You know, R&D is very involved. But but then it wouldn't be a hexagon. And so we had to choose which ones we would put. Uh, we, these are the ones that in our interviews have kind of bubbled up as at least at the start, because this is really, most companies are really, mm. I think, at the front end of this implementation. These are the functional areas that are most impacted. Good? Absolutely. OK, so do you want to talk about the index? So we developed an index, sort of a maturity model, if you will, about different organizations and sort of where they are in terms of the curve. Part of what comes through in the report is this dimension of orchestrators again, and who in that dimension are the intentional orchestrators versus not, meaning who's actually further along on the curve. Do you want to advance that, Liz? Sure. So those that coordinate cross-functional management of internal and external workers is sort of the front beginning step. Next step. Those that hire and engage internal and external talent they need. We discovered that those that were intentional were about eight times more likely to help their managers find the external talent needed for any one project, any one business outcome, any one effort that they were undertaking. Next slide. Um, supporting managers seeking to hire external workers, that 8x. Next slide. Um, having leadership that understands how to allocate work 
So this one became very interesting, right? Actually thinking about the work itself and organizing the project work and the work of the, of the team focused on the outcome in a way that would enable the external contractor, the external party, or the other part of the ecosystem to come to the table. We found that the, those that were intentional orchestrators were actually 5x more likely to have thought about the work and reorganized it, re-architected it in some ways, in order to elevate what the workforce was doing and bring the right parties with the right skills to the table via the ecosystem. And then finally, back to the earlier comment I made, aligning the overall business strategy with that workforce approach. So back to the decisions around Amazon and Amazon Flex, we're watching a number of organizations kind of lean this way, given the um, challenges of the great resignation around cyber talent or around AI talent and so forth. And so it's about being intentional in terms of the business strategy so that you can then achieve sort of, again, this maturity model across this index and help find the workforce that you need broadly in the ecosystem and organize the work accordingly to take advantage of that ecosystem. Anything you'd add? Sure. Uh, so yes, uh, the last one, not surprisingly, is my favorite because I'm a strategy professor. And so when we talk about aligning a workforce with business strategy, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, so what we found is, if we think back, traditionally, organizations develop a strategy and then figure out who and what they need to accomplish that strategy. So that's kind of the general trend, right? Come up with a strategy, figure out what your resources are. What we're seeing with workforce ecosystems is that you can flip the script to some extent. So now you have access to resources that you might not have had access to before, and you can really kind of think about how does that influence your business strategy. And my favorite story on this was a large uh, marketing creative agency that we were talking with, mm -hmm. and they said, you know, never really occurred to us that we have access to TikTok skills, but out in our larger community, not our elder kind of senior people, but in our broader ecosystem, we have people who really are quite good at TikTok, and they like doing it, and they're incredibly creative. And if we can bring them in and partner them with some of our more established personnel, then together we can offer this skill to our clients in a way that we hadn't before. And we can become much more multimedia. And we literally can change kind of our strategy for how we engage with clients because of these capabilities that we have out in our ecosystem. And when I heard the story, that's when it kind of clicked for me that this truly is a different way to think about strategy as you're thinking about the broader workforce ecosystem. So Alison, I think, I'm, am I gonna hand it back to you for sure. just a few last Closing comments? Yeah, sure. On our last slide, we actually have a little bit of information about resources available. So thanks, everybody, for listening in. You can scan the QR code if you like. That'll take you to that landing page Liz was referencing. So if you want to play with the interactive, you want to read any of the content, we have three years' worth of reports, some articles, other materials available there, contact info for our speakers here. And I think I speak for our panel when I say we're happy to answer any questions, chat with you offline about any of these ideas, too, as we're milling around the conference. So really just thank you for having us. Hope you found this interesting and can take some of it back to work with you as well. <laughs>